Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of representing ratios and rates. This is standard 6.5a in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 24 off the 2017 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So the list shows the number of viewers of an online music video for each of five consecutive days. So each, this is going to be day one, so that we can make a little table if we really need to. Day one, day two, day three, day four, and day five. So that might help us organize a little bit more. By what factor did the number of viewers change each day from the first day to the fifth day? So our only clue is something changed from day one to day five, which is obvious. The numbers are getting much bigger, and we have to figure out what this factor is. So when we're dealing with ratios and rates, sometimes we will talk about a scale factor. So a scale factor, or sometimes just called a factor, is the relationship between these two numbers. So we need to find the relationship between these two numbers and then we need to see if that relationship continues all the way up, and that would be the factor. Well, we have a clue in this term itself. If you know your math vocabulary, you know a factor is one of the two parts of a, mul a typical multiplication problem that you multiply to get to a product. So if we were to say 3 times 8 equals 24, you would have two factors. So those two are factors, and then this is called the product. So the fact that we're calling this a factor makes me think we are probably dealing with multiplication. So let's see if we can figure this out. 5 times something equals 35. Well, that's a basic fact, so we lucked out with these first two. Looks like it might be 7, which is one of our options. But that just happens to be the relationship or the factor between the first two. Let's see if that continues. So 35, let's see if it's a, I'm going to put a times 7. Let's see if times 7 works to get me up to 245. And that's going to get pretty big pretty quick. That's 21 plus 3 is 245, so that works. Oof, let's see if we can get a plus or a times 7 to multiply that to get to 1,715. So that's 35. 7 times 4 is 28. At that 3 is 31. And 7 times 2 is 14. And there we go. We've got the 1715. The biggest question is what happens if we multiply this 1715 times that scale factor of 7? Are we going to really get that 12,005? So 5 times 7 is 35, 7 times 1 is 7, add that 3 is 10, so that gets us at least one zero. 7 times 7 is 49, add another 1 is 50, so that gets us another 0. And then 7 times 1 is 7, add that 5 back in, we do have that 12,005. So our answer is going to be this F, this 7. Now, how do we get some of these incorrect answers? Well, take a look at this right here, this 12,000. You're thinking, that's, that's pretty strange. That's a random number, but look at how we found 12,000. It makes sense if you're not really sure what the factor is. Take your very first number and your very last number, and guess what you get? If you take your 12,000, 5, and you subtract 5. So if you didn't necessarily know what to do, that factor didn't give you a hint that it's multiplication, you can find the difference between the largest and the smallest number, which actually, many of you should be thinking, that's the range. And that is how we find the range of numbers, is we subtract the first number from the last number, the smallest from the biggest, but that is not what we're looking at right here. Also, we've got this 30. Well, take a look at these first two numbers right here. We've got a 5, and we've got a 35. Well, what if I didn't think of my multiplication like I did down here? Well, I guess I could add, right? So I could add to get that 35, but then that doesn't work all the way up, just like the 12,000 doesn't work all the way up. 